Turn right onto two board bench. <laughs> That's my GPS. <laughs> Thank God you're here because today we're gonna to be talking about a question that we get asked a lot, which is, do you really need to know Danish if you're gonna live in Denmark? And it's actually a pretty easy answer. So we'll just say it, yes. No. All right, it's a bit complicated. So let's get into it and make this kind of make sense to you. Into it. Now I said yes, because I, I just think that if you're gonna move somewhere, uh, you know, when in Rome, or in this case, when in Denmark, you should learn a little bit of the language of the country that has taken you in. Um, now, of course, whatever your reason is for moving there, it's going to have a different kind of importance and a different kind of urgency as to how quickly and how severely you're going to need to learn Danish. If you live in a more rural area outside of the main cities, if you're outside of sort of a university setting, then you really are going to need to learn some Danish at some point. Um, and if you are moving because you have a Danish partner, you may need to communicate with their children or nephews or nieces or your in-laws may sometimes not speak great English uh, because they're just going to default to Danish. So you wanna be able to communicate with them. And that's an instance where you wanna show the effort that you're really trying to fit in culturally. Yeah, and I said, no, honestly, you should learn how to speak Danish. But part of why I said that is because of the situation that we had when we came over. We were on a fixed term contract. And so we figured we were going back to the US and my office spoke almost exclusively English and had more non-Dane than, than Danes in the office. So for us, it wasn't a prerequisite for, for us to go ahead and do it. But at the same time, it was a good idea. I mean, one of the hard parts in Denmark, if you want to learn the language, is that English proficiency is quite high. And I can say anecdotally, I don't really think we've had a situation with anyone over probably the age of 15 where we couldn't flip to English if we had to for anything that we were doing. So it wasn't a necessity for us. If anything, it was a bit of a luxury to take Danish. Sure, but just because people do speak English and they speak it pretty well, doesn't mean that you shouldn't learn it. It also doesn't mean that even in an office that is somewhat international or at a university where you're gonna be in an international setting, that the default won't be Danish. So when you're looking at signs, when you're um, maybe approaching to colleagues that are Danish, they're gonna be speaking to each other in Danish. So you're gonna have some situations, which we'll get into coming up, that are gonna be easier if you at least know a little bit of basic Danish. Yeah, and so with that, our recommendation, if you're gonna be in Denmark for more than probably about a year, take classes. In general, they're free, and you can go ahead and maybe you can take the first module and just learn some of the basics. That way you'll understand how the language works, and on top of that, it's a good way to make friends because you'll be filled with other newcomers to, to Denmark. So our first situation is gonna be jobs. So Derek, in your experience, do you need to know Danish in order to get a job in Denmark? So if you don't know Danish, it's definitely possible to get a job in Denmark, but it's a heck of a lot easier if you do speak Danish, or at least some. Um, and part of that is because finding a job in Denmark has to do a lot more with your network than your actual skills. They hire for cultural fit. And we've talked about this in some other videos that we have, um, but really, if you show that you're learning Danish, that you're interested in Danish culture, it's going to speak a lot better to the type of employee that you are and how you're gonna fit into the office. Um, and Danes tend to have uh, a natural inclination to hire Danes first. So if you don't have a Danish name like me, um, then it you wanna show that you're dedicated to being in Denmark, that you uh, are doing things to get involved in Denmark and that your life is in Denmark. And part of that is gonna be having at least some of the Danish language um, committed. And I always say, if you are doing your CV to get a job in Denmark, always put Danish on there. Even if it's something you've only picked up on Duolingo, put beginner as the level and show that you're at least a beginner level Danish <laughs> student. Uh, whether you're in classes or just learning on Duolingo, uh, make some effort and show that and you're gonna have a much better time finding a job. Yeah, and I can say having worked only in English uh, language offices for non-Danish companies, you know, still there's a lot of Danes that are obviously gonna work in there and you're gonna be missing out on the conversations that are happening when it's just two or three Danes talking. It can also be a little bit awkward if you're the only non-Dane at a lunch table. Sure, people have no problem speaking English, but they also wouldn't mind speaking in their native tongue for a half hour as they catch up with colleagues. I think additionally, when I've seen us do some hiring, 
it's, as Derek said, it's important to put, if you are living in Denmark and you are learning Danish, to put that on there because there are a ton of applicants that apply for jobs in Denmark. It's a very desirable job market, including folks that don't even live in Denmark quite yet. So by making that effort of saying that you're doing that will be really powerful. And on top of that, if you have a couple of catchphrases in Danish, even if you're not very good in it, that you can bring into the interview, it helps show that you really want to be here. Companies have a concern about retention. If it doesn't seem like you want to be in Denmark, why are they going to invest in hiring you? Make it seem like you want to be here for the long haul, and that'll really help you stand out. Yeah. Okay, so besides jobs, uh, what about friends? That's a big part of moving here. Do you think that you need to know Danish in order to make friends? So big picture, no, but if you want to meet Danish friends, it's a heck of a lot harder if you don't. Yeah, and same thing. Yeah, and I think the, the big thing is that it depends on where you are in your time in Denmark and on what kind of friends you want to meet. Uh, for one, the first friends that you're going to meet when you come over here are probably going to be other expats anyways. And it's especially a good reason why you want to take Danish classes to meet other newcomers that are brand new to Denmark as well. But as you spend more time here, you're going to want to better integrate. You're going to want to make Danish friends. And as we talked about in other videos, Danes tend to keep a little bit of a closer circle and they prefer having deep friendships rather than, say, fleeting acquaintances. So if you want to meet Danes that are a little bit more than just, say, bar friends or broad acquaintances, then at least making a little bit of effort into Danish language or some Danish culture is really going to be imperative for you to be able to start making friends. Yeah, not knowing the language does kind of send a signal that you're not really committed to staying here or living here. And if you're not really bought into Denmark, it kind of sends a signal that you're not going to be here very long and people may not want to befriend you or get as close to you um, as, as, as a, a normal Danish friendship. Uh, one good way to meet Danes, and we've talked about this in other videos as well, is through clubs and organizations. And for us, the club that we joined, we were lucky. Uh, it was a mix of Danes and internationals. But often you may join clubs where the dominant language is going to be Danish. Even times when I would end up on practice teams with people that, um, that only spoke Danish, because, well, they were Danish. And, um, you know, it's, for me, I'm an extrovert. It's a little bit harder for me to be left out of a conversation, and I get kind of like in the moment FOMO, but um, that's going to happen and you have to expect that if you don't at least follow along to a point. Uh, so yeah, to, 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 to wrap it up, uh, I would say basically you don't need to know Danish in order to make friends, even Danish friends, but it is helpful and you'll find that your Danish friends are going to have no problem spending the whole night with you and speaking English that whole time, but eventually, uh, you know, they... There's going to be side conversations yeah. that are going to be in Danish, and that's just, it's natural. It's, again, we're, we're in Denmark. Yeah, so include yourself and learn some Danish. So we've done big stuff, jobs, friends. So how about something basic there? Do you need to know Danish in order to get around town? Uh, whew. Um, no, again, this is one where it's no, but when something goes wrong or if you don't know where you're going, you're going to need to navigate a little bit, at least, uh, in Danish. You know, the signage in a train station, you know, like Central Station, it's going to be in Danish and English, so you'll probably be fine. Even the announcements, that regular announcements that are on the trains are fine. Even in the metro here, um, they started doing an English uh, uh, type uh, pronunciation of different uh, stops along the metro, which is kind of funny when you know the language a bit. Um, but if something goes wrong, if they are stopping the train or the train's not coming for some reason or your train is delayed and they make an announcement, you probably won't know what's being said and you're going to have to turn to somebody and ask them. Uh, of course, they'll do it in English as well if they have uh, maybe collected tickets or, or checked tickets and heard that there are some English speakers on the train that are non-Danish speakers, but they have no reason to do that and they may not do it. <laughs> and then you're going to have to ask somebody. Yeah. And you mentioned the place name. That's something else that's why it's important to at least understand Danish pronunciation, a little bit of Danish, because if you have a conversation with a Dane, it'll be in proper perfect English, but then the place names are going to be said in a proper Danish accent. So when you first come over here, you're going to be really confused if you live in Copenhagen, you're trying to find someone that lives on Ama, and you see on the map and it says Amager. Or if you hear somebody say, oh, I live over in Faxbat, and you have no idea where that is. It's Fredericksburg on the map. Same thing with street names. One of the things that was really hard for us when we first moved here was trying to remember what the street names were because they sounded and looked completely different. And they're all pretty long names typically as well. So that confused us a lot when we came over. So again, take the lessons, understand the pronunciation, and you'll at least be able to hear things and say, I think I know what that looks like. But then again, probably not. 
Okay, so that's getting around town, but what about daily? Like, do you need to know Danish to live in Denmark and get by in daily life? So, no, not necessarily, but you're going to pick up on the basics pretty quick. Yeah. Probably the, the best example is going to be the grocery store, where you literally can see the object and see the name of it as you go through. That's an area that we learn basic food Danish pretty quick, and especially helps if there's something that you don't like. You quickly see it there, and you realize if you don't like cucumbers, stay away from the Gurk. Uh, additionally, if you go into other shops and boutiques, you're probably going to be greeted, if at all, by somebody because, again, the culture here is that generally shop clerks will kind of let you be and not get all in your business like you're used to in the, the U.S. where they hover over you uh, like, like, like nothing else. Um, here, maybe they'll come up to you and say, like, hey, help a die, can I help you? If you respond in English, they'll flip to English right away, no problem at all. The, the only real issue that maybe I've run into is if you're going to some sort of, like, specialty store, like in electronics, and you're trying to describe the part that you need. This is the kind of thing that Danes probably don't think about in English at all. And so this is where Google's a huge help, or Wikipedia, to see what it is in the two different languages. And I've never had a problem once we did that. Yeah, and some words don't even have like a direct translation, no. so that yeah, can be tricky. Um, even like restaurants, like at a restaurant, I generally know enough Danish food words from grocery shopping that I can kind of tell if there's something on that dish or in that dish that I want to avoid. Um, you know, I don't always have to ask for an English. Many people always offer once they hear you speak English. Most restaurants are going to have an English menu, especially in the cities. But if you go outside of um, some of the major cities and you probably are going to need to know uh, at least restaurant menu Danish uh, to figure out what you're going to order. But I'd say, yeah, all in all, you're probably okay in your day to day. But there's always situations that come up where something isn't uh, provided a translation or there's no direct translation. So the more you know, the better and easier day-to-day -day life is going to be. So we covered the little stuff. You can get around town, you can handle basic errands and, and stuff around with basic life here. But then, Derek, if you're living in Denmark, do you need to know Danish in order to handle the big stuff? We're talking about rental agreements and working with doctors and official government stuff yeah. that goes on. Do you yeah. need to know Danish? Yeah, like 100%, yes. Now, you may be able to get by by asking your friends for help or things like that, but if you just get here and you don't know anybody yet, you're going to have trouble with those big things. You are going to need to rely on other people. Um, there's a lot of things from yeah rental agreements, anything official government document is going to be in Danish, so that could be tricky for you. You're also going to have certain things, even banking apps, for example, may have English on some pages or, or SCAT, the tax uh, authority will have some English, but not everything. And some words just, again, just don't translate. So you're going to need uh, need some help from people. It's also, uh, I think we saw this year, the last <laughs> two years really, have been years where there have been a lot of um, government press conferences. Y'all know what we're talking about. Um, and if you don't know Danish, that, that was difficult for us because we had very rudimentary Danish, we still do, and there were a lot of times where we had to, we thought we knew what was going on and we had to confirm with a friend and call and say, uh, what are we allowed to do? Are we allowed to go outside? Uh, you know, And that's no fun. So the, the, the sooner you learn, the easier these major things are gonna be. Yeah, we had the same experience when we bought our flat last year because Obviously, everything is going to be in Danish for official documentation. And the experience we had was that when we talked with the realtor or bank advisors, they were very comfortable in English, of course, but there'd always be things we'd come down to where we'd be talking and they'd be like, I'm not sure what the term for that is in English. It makes sense. I mean, your entire Why professional life has been in, in Danish. Why would you think about what certain finance terms may be in English? Totally understand. And, and this is where Google Translate isn't necessarily your friend because there's certain jargon and turns of phrase that are in more legally type things that Google Translate just doesn't understand. So we really had to lean on some friends and colleagues that had gone through the process before to help us. And along the way, I can say our apartment buying Danish has gotten so much better having gone through the experience. Okay, and kind of a, a sappy one though, do you need to know Danish if you're living in Denmark and you want to feel Danish? Absolutely, yes. I mean, language is yeah. culture, and there's always going to be a bit of a wall for the place that you're living in if you don't understand the language, because there's going to be so many things that you miss out on. 
Uh, you're not going to be able to read the newspaper, watch TV. These, these are all things that are going to keep you from really understanding that next level down. And there's not enough English language YouTube channels or English language conversations with your friends that are going to really get you into the Danish culture unless you learn Danish language. And that's been a barrier for us so far from fully understanding more about Danish culture and Danish life because our Danish isn't really all that good. And that's really blocked us from being able to fully, fully enjoy the Danish experience. Yeah, it's kind of like being around all of your best friends, but there's an inside joke that you just don't understand. You know, we miss out on some pop culture things. We miss out on just newspapers and, and magazines and seeing, you know, even a tabloid. It's like, I, I wish I knew all of the nuance of what was in that. Even if I can read it verbatim and I can translate it in my head, it may not be what the actual meaning is because we miss out on turns of phrases and things like that. And knowing the language is, is really the last key step, I think, of really fitting in with the culture because there are so many things that, you know, understanding the Danish sense of humor, and we've talked about it before on our channel, is really unique and, um, and, and special. And, and sure, it takes a little bit of adjusting to, but when you understand the language, you know, uh, jokes from comedians and in Danish movies and television, it's hard to translate a wordplay or a pun or something that is just unique to the language. And, you know, knowing that language basically unlocks a door to the culture. And I think one of the good things here is that Danes are very open and they want to welcome you into the culture and they want to welcome you to the language. So even if you're starting to speak Danish and you get told you would take it in English, keep going through it. One of the things that we do love about living here and trying to use our really, really bad Danish is that people give you credit for the effort and it's an important thing that you keep trying because it's the only way that you're going to be able to get past these walls and really get into the culture that we just so love being a part of. Yeah, and be brave and push back. If somebody asks to switch to English and you're really practicing, say no, we're going to uh, we're gonna finish this in, in Danish and, and push back. It's hard for, for Danes to listen. They have to listen a bit harder because your accent is going to be difficult. You may not pronounce everything correctly. But push back and say, no, I want to speak uh, in Danish. This is important to me. And that's really going to say a lot to you. So thank you guys so much for watching our video about if you need to know Danish in order to live in Denmark. We hope you enjoyed it. Um, let us know what you think and the thoughts in, in, in the comments below because this is something that I've seen a lot on LinkedIn and people talking about lately. So drop a comment and let us know what your opinion is. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and let us know. And also make sure you subscribe to our channel if you're not already. We have more content just like this that usually comes out on Thursdays. So hit the bell for notifications so you're informed when we drop new videos. Thanks guys. Uh -huh. Be safe.